What's up, my YouTube friends? I'm in the darkness over here. It's a cloudy Saturday, and for some reason, it's just dark in here, man. I don't even think like my the light in my truck makes a difference. It's just dark. Uh, hope you put up with it. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Questions from the Truck. This is number 17. I thank you for your questions, and most of all, I thank you for helping everybody get answers to their questions. My first question is from Steam and Diesel Productions. He wants to know, what's the furthest railroad I've visited? I don't get around too much. It's mostly local. Um, sorry about that. Um, furthest, probably Pittsburgh, uh, Connecticut, and Baltimore. That's it. Uh, he wants to know, why does it take so long... For the trains to get together and they hold up the traffic crossings. Mostly he's probably talking about Willsmere Yard down in Delaware. And the same thing happens at 58th Street in Philly. Uh, these trains are so long they don't fit in the yards. And, you know, they're working the yards or doing crew changes. And they just don't fit, man. And especially at 58th Street, they don't fit, you know. Um, some of these trains are two miles long. Yeah. Willsmere Yard, I don't think, is two miles long. It might be close to it. But, yeah, they just don't fit. It's just how it is. Welcome to 2020. It's not going to change either. Uh, his last question is, uh, Stroudsburg, opening day. Do I know anything? Uh, I only know what's out there. And they have... Uh, I think June 15th, I think, or the second weekend of June, is tickets are available. That doesn't mean anything because it's changed four times. Take it for what it's worth. Um, yeah. It's a sad thing. You know, a lot of these railroads would like to open these tourist railroads. Um, we're losing some of them because they're can't afford to stay in their places. Uh, I think the Mount Rainier Tourist Railroad in Washington uh, closed their doors. Um, maybe it's temporary. I don't know. It says it's closed. Um, so who knows? We're probably going to lose some great tourist railroads over this. Just how it is, man. Hopefully somebody else will pick up their equipment. Uh, my next question is from Drew Steel 69 Drew wants to know, he notices trash cars at the end of the trains. Um, and I guess, is there a reason for it? I guess, Drew, it's, they can just drop off these trash cars wherever they're going. Um, they pick them up as one big unit. And they could just drop them off really easy. That's just my guess. And they're they're on the back of the train, whether they're going west or east. And west, they're going, and they're loaded. East, they're empty. They're on the back, no matter what. That's my only guess, Drew. Thanks for your question. My next question is from the Railroad Crossing Channel. He's a local guy. He shoots up. A lot of local stuff. He's in the railroad crossings. He knows a lot about crossings. Go check out his channel. He wants to know, he's noticed uh, on the CSX 8400 unit, that's a SD40-2. You see it a lot on my Conrail Shared Assets videos. Um, it has a spirit of Roby on it. And he wants to know if that's a spirit unit. I'm going to guess no. Only because it looks really cheesy. <laughs> And um, it's only on one side, and I looked around, and I don't see anything about it. So I think somebody just stuck that sticker on there and went with it. I don't know. This train, this engine really sticks around, so it's not going to, you know, any of the shops, per se, that are off out of this area so once it does probably that sticker will come off that's just my guess uh, thanks for your question hey if anybody else knows anything about it let us know my last question is from Dave's Trains 
Dave over there has got a woodworking question. He wants to know if I use high-end woods like maple and pecan. I never use pecan, but I use maple all the time. Walnut, mahogany, and all. He wants to know where I get it from. And most of the time, Dave, I get it from my local lumber, lumber yard. They have a really good selection of all different hardwoods, exotic woods. So that's where I get it from. And I have a lumber guy. Well, I had a lumber guy until he passed away. And same place, same thing. Um, you can call around. You might not find something local, local if you're in a really small town. But check, check Craigslist, too. That's a good spot. Sometimes uh, back years ago when I used to buy a lot of lumber, I would buy, you know, over buy because I was getting a good deal and I would sell off what I didn't use on Craigslist. Craigslist is a pretty good spot. A lot of local sawmills. Check around for local sawmills. You're probably not going to catch things like mahogany there, but you will catch, you know, maple and oak and walnut probably and local hardwoods that are in your area. Hey, Dave, I hope that helped. Look around. You'll find something. I thank you all for your questions. I wish you all a good week. Be blessed. Have a, I hope you had a good weekend. And I'll see you Wednesday on a reminder for next Sunday's show. Not this Sunday coming up. The following Sunday in June. It'll be June. June 2nd or 3rd. Something like that. Man, I can't believe it's June already coming up. That's crazy. Time's flying. Hey, be well. Be blessed. Yeah. See ya! This breaking news. I have an emergency question. Dwight Curley, uh, he just messaged me. I already did my show, but I'm going to tack this on the video because he'd like to get an answer for it. Uh, he's laying track, and he's got two pieces of foam that are coming together, and I guess one of them is not level. What should he do to remedy this problem? Sand it? Tell him. Help him out. Let's get Dwight straightened out. Thanks, guys. See ya.